going on guys? First of all, I want to let you guys know that we're going to get into some new training and I'll be talking about that real soon. And I want to thank everyone for leaving these well-constructed comments in the comment section. I really appreciate that. And this is one of the comments that I've been getting on multiple channels. How do I protect my money during this inflationary period? So watch this video from beginning to end because I'm going to set up the scenarios because there's not one answer. The answer depends upon your financial situation. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, let's say it's 2019. Let's kind of walk back a little bit. And you have $1 million cash in the bank. This is above and beyond what you need to live on. It's just additional money that you literally just have laying around. And you want to protect this money against inflation. So since we now know what has happened since the pandemic, if you had taken your $1 million and bought real estate, you would have got almost a 50% return on your money in roughly three years. Whether you rented it out or not, if you just bought real estate, held on to it, you would have turned your $1 million into about 1.4 million. And what do we know about inflation? Inflation in 2019 was 2%. 2020, it went up. 2021, it went up a lot. 2022, it's still going up. So you would have protected your money against inflation. This is one of the things that I was attempting to do with the car rental business. I just had part, because that $400,000 was just part of some money that I had laying around. Thank God I did something else with the rest of the money that turned out really, really nice. And I'll share what you did, what I did with the money. I had a friend and we went in on a venture. I put up half, he put up half, and we got an 80% return on our money. So that worked out really, really well. Now, if you are part of the 75% of America, that doesn't make, it makes 35,000. Let, let, let's talk about that. I had so many people who felt that they could not believe had someone's like, well, when they turn 40, they're gonna automatically start making 50. Let me tell you a story. My mother was a domestic, fancy word for a maid. My mother probably never made more than $15,000 because she was, she worked as a maid, then she worked in the school cafeteria, then she worked as being a cashier at Walmart. At no point did my mother's income dramatically go up the whole time that she was alive. Let me say this, typically, typically, the social economic level that you're born into, you died. My mother actually slid back. My grandfather was an entrepreneur and my uncles, I look at the pictures, they were doing well. They had a car in the 1930s. Cars were not cheap. That was a sign of upper to middle class income to afford a car because everyone couldn't afford a car. My mother literally slid back. So this notion that you're gonna reach a certain age and that your income is automatically going to go up is fundamentally false. I've been looking at these income ranges for years and uh, I'm gonna do a video talking about how I came up with these numbers and where I got these numbers from. But once again, if you're part of that 75% who doesn't earn $35,000 a year. I have some very bad news for you. There is nothing you can do 
to protect your money from inflation. Whoa, why is that? Because all of your money is consumed to live. You buy gas, right? Gas has gone up. So when you buy a tank of gas, you expose that money to inflation. You go to, you like to eat, you go to the grocery store. When you buy groceries, you expose that money to inflation. You're paying rent. You expose that money to inflation. Now, if you make less than $35,000 a year and you bought a house, then you're, that's actually a protective thing against inflation because your mortgage is locked in and your mortgage is not going to go up unless you have an adjustable rate. So that is kind of a hedge against inflation, buying a house, staying in that house and just paying your, your rent, your mortgage. But typically if you make under $35,000 a year and you don't have any money that's above and beyond what you need to live, there's nothing you can do to protect your money against inflation. There's absolutely nothing you can do if your income continues to be that low. There ain't nothing you can do. Your money will be consumed by inflation. I was talking to a friend who lives up in Outback, North Dakota. And she said her electric bill, her gas bill literally doubled. It literally doubled. It caught her off guard. Now, one of the things that we consistently see, because you got people out here who are buying silver, you got people out here who are buying gold as a way to protect some of their money. See, if you do not have a large chunk of money sitting off to the side that you don't need to live, there's nothing you can do to protect your money against inflation. There's nothing you can do, nothing. Except, and this is why I said watch the video from the beginning to the end. You guys have heard me talk about, I am not concerned about inflation. Right now, there is a war going on in the Ukraine between Ukraine and Russia. And it's driving the world crazy because Russia is a big supplier of oil, gas, and the fifth largest reserve of gold in the world. So this war that Russia started with Ukraine, and Ukraine exports a lot of stuff itself, is causing the markets to go nuts. And I saw a video that I felt was hyped up. Take your money out the bank. At the moment, I have quite a bit of money in the bank and I have no intentions of taking the money out the bank to put it somewhere or to put it to work. I have no intentions of buying crypto. Someone asked me, should we buy crypto? Let's go ahead and talk about crypto. If you could have got in on the Sheena Bula, whatever that thing was, at the beginning, you could have made a lot of money. I feel that the crypto market is driven by hype versus utility. There are some cryptos that have utility. The vast majority of them don't have any utility, have no purpose, and they're just driven by someone hoping to buy the crypto at a low enough price that when they flip it, they can get a return. That's how I see the crypto market. And I wouldn't say like, why am I not worried about inflation? I'm not even concerned. Whenever I read the headlines, I'm well aware of the war with Russia and Ukraine. I'm well aware of what it's done to the stock markets, what it's done to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is down. I'm not concerned. You want to know why I'm not concerned? Let's kind of go back in time. When did I start this YouTube channel? 2009. What was going on in 2009? We were in a recession. Inflation was going nuts. And I became a millionaire during inflationary periods of time. This is why, well, once again, let me say this with the great deal of empathy that I can muster. I don't want to see anyone get hurt. 
I don't want to see anyone lose money, but I'm waiting on this recession like a mofo. Why? People are on sale. Materials are on sale. Rents are cheap. Everything's on sale. During this recession, and I'm going to make a very bold prediction, we're going to have another housing crash, not this year, probably 2023, 2024. Why we're going to have a housing crash? Number one, the price of houses have gotten out of reach of the average person. So we don't have people who can afford these houses. Zillow bought a bunch of houses and Zillow had to take some hits to sell these houses because they've spent too much money. So we're now in the housing market danger zone. And as the interest rates go up, X amount of people fall below the level of buying a house or the amount of house that they can buy is dramatically reduced. So we're going to have another housing crash. And I feel that the people who bought properties for Airbnb, like I have a friend who bought 10 properties for Airbnb and Airbnb uh, occupancy went way, went way down on them, way down. And then they're liquidating these properties in this hyper environment. And that is their saving grace because they're selling these houses for more than what they paid for them. So they're going to exit with a nice tidy profit. But one of the reasons that I, Glendon Cameron, don't even think about inflation. I don't lose sleep about inflation. I don't think, I don't panic about inflation. When I go to the gas pump, I put my credit card in the machine and I fill up my cars. I'm not worried about inflation. You know why I'm not worried about inflation? I've been through this a few times. I'm 55 years of age. I've been through this a few times. So here is the one true way, regardless of your income level, that you can protect your money against inflation. Make more money. Sounds simple, but for some people it can be rather hard. But this is how, this is one of the reasons I am not worried about inflation because I make way more money than I need to live. I've been able to help out people. Um, let me tell you what I'm getting ready to do. I am going to give away one car at the first of March. I'm just going to give it away. Now, why do you say, why are you giving this car away? This is something that I have noticed since I've moved and just stick with me because I'm, I got a big point to make here. I believe in abundance and since I believe in abundance, I live my life based on abundance. When I moved from my house into this spot, I gave away thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Why did I give it away? First of all, hassle factor. Selling stuff online requires you to consistently repost it and deal with people and deal with a lot of stuff. So I created a threshold. If this um, item couldn't get me a hundred bucks and the threshold has gone up, I would just give it away. I gave away studio lights. I literally gave away GoPro cameras. I gave it away. Why? Because I believe in abundance. When you believe in abundance and when you live in abundance, giving the stuff away, is not a problem. Uh, I went ahead and like I said, I have a wrecked Toyota Camry that I'm just going to give away or I'm going to drill down the price super cheap just to get rid of it. Now, why do I do that? When I give stuff away, I always get a bounce in my life. I always, it, it starts moving stuff. It start. it's like every time I do it, there's always a bounce. There's always a positive outcome in another area of my life. So I am, because I believe in abundance, I'm giving this car away. I know that just sounds crazy, but I believe in abundance. Right now, if I was to stop this YouTube channel and to just go away, I could live for years just based on the money I have in the bank, not including my investments. 
I can live for years. So why not give it away? Why not give it away? So I'm gonna give this camera away just to get it all, get it out my sight so I can stop dealing with it. Cause this is one of the things that happens when I sell these cars and someone comes to look at, these renters have abused the car. They always find something extra wrong with it. The Camry has a gas leak. And I'm just sitting there like, you know what? I'm gonna get this turkey away because I am sick and tired of dealing with it because I believe in abundance and time is money. The time that I could literally spend trying to sell this Camry, I could create an online course and make $100,000. Same time, same time. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give the Camry away. I'm gonna price the cars so they will start moving because I believe in abundance. And also, since I'm playing the corporate game, I get to take $150,000 for depreciation for last year. I get to take the expenses because I had $150,000 in car repairs. Those two deductions right there are 300,000. That's from last year. And this year I get to take a smaller amount of depreciation because I'm not going to have the cars for the full year. And I get to sell the cars at a loss, which I get to write off on my taxes, which will probably be another $300,000. So I spent 400,000 and I'm going to get 600,000 in write downs, which is going to eliminate my federal income tax for two years or potentially three, because you know, depending upon if I want to carry those losses forward. So I'm going to get probably I don't even know what I paid in taxes. I got to look. I, I don't even, and I don't have any deductions. I get hit hard on taxes because I don't have any deductions. Because I know that I have so much money coming in that it doesn't make any sense to have any deductions. Because honestly, if it wasn't for the car rental business, I would have probably had to pay some more money on my taxes. So I'm going to get $400,000 money spent and I'm going to get $600,000 in deductions and then get all this money that I paid in federal taxes back. And that's going to make me whole. That's probably going to put me ahead 100, 150,000 on the car rental business. Now, why do I tell you this? I came here on YouTube and I talked about the car business and I was completely honest and transparent with you guys. And I am able to play the corporate game and spend $400,000. I had many people who was like, did you actually, because let, let's go ahead and take a little departure. Most folks have never seen $100,000 cash anywhere. They've never seen it in their bank account. Now I'm not talking about, you may have a 401k at 100K, that's not cash. You can convert that to cash, but you would take a heavy hit if you converted that to cash because the RS would be eating you alive. But the average person, let's go ahead and take it down. Average person hasn't even seen $50,000 cash in their bank account. They haven't seen it. So for the average person to hear someone literally start a business with $400,000 cash, spin it, show you what they spent it on, document the process and tell you about the business is rather unusual here on YouTube, the land of hype, lies, and fake YouTube millionaires. Yeah, I said it. I thought a lot of these guys here on YouTube are masquerading as fake millionaires. There's one guy who is gonna sell his house, is selling his cars because he can realize a return and I'm just sitting there like, sit with me for a minute. You know why rich folks, the truly rich people, the folks who are living these fantastic lives for real, aren't on Instagram, aren't on YouTube. They know that if you were sitting there, that this would create so much hate, create so much jealousy, that, and especially during this global reset, 
during this global reset would create so much drama for these people that they're like, we can do without that. This is why the truly wealthy, the people with money only hang out and have conversations with other wealthy people. There might be someone on a lower social economic strata that they can be cool with, they can be open with, but typically that's atypical. So let's go ahead and answer the question, why am I not worried about inflation? Because I have a plan to make more money. That is the thing that you've got to do if you don't want, that's how you can protect your money. You have more of it than you need. That's how you protect your money. This whole thing, like every time I hear YouTubers like, I've just ordered a bunch of silver, I just ordered a bunch of gold. Every time I hear a YouTuber say that I bought a bunch of gold or a bunch, a bunch of silver as a hedge against inflation, I silently chuckle. Because every time I see a YouTuber, they're telling me how much money they don't have. Like, one of the things that really gets me is the fundamental lack of financial literacy and how people don't understand how money works. Okay, once again, you need to make more money. This is something that I have been preaching for years. This is one of the reasons that I, Glendon Cameron, are not worried about inflation. I'm not worried about it because in the future, and also for all of my moist men, man, the economy goes to crap. Who gonna buy your courses? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you, Lucy, that regardless of how bad the economy gets, there will always be people willing to buy. The worst economic period we had in the United States was the Great Depression, which lasted 10 years. You know how many people got rich during the Great Depression? Wells Fargo became one of the largest banks during the Great Depression. For those who have money set off to the side, a depression is a fire sale. Everything's on sale. Cars on sale, people on sale, women on sale. Yeah, I said that. People on sale, uh, rents reduced. Everything is on sale, everything. So if you have cash, you can take advantage of the sale like no one you would believe. You can go out and participate in this fire sale because you have cash. So this is one of the reasons that once again, I don't want to see anyone hurt. I don't want to see anyone lose their house. I don't want to see anyone economically damaged. But for the record, I am waiting on this recession with bated breath. I can't wait. I can't wait. And also, before the recession gets here, it is my intention to make a gang of more money. Once again, what am I telling you to do? To make more money. So you don't have to worry about inflation. Cause like every time, like these guys, they crack me up. I, I just bought all this silver. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about, and for those of you who are curious, read what happened to Bosnia and Argentina when their economies collapsed. Collapsed. The economy collapsed. You're not going to be able to utilize your silver. You're not going to be able to utilize your gold. You know what's going to be more important? Water and food. That will be more important than silver and gold. Once again, read what happened to Bosnia. Read what happened to the rich people. They were the first to go because they didn't have a, a partnerships. They didn't have a cooperative. They were alone. They had all this money and they were alone and they became targets. This is one of the reasons I moved out of my house because I don't think that we're going to have a great, uh, another depression. We might. And once that happens, all bets are off. All bets are off. So if you want to truly protect your money against inflation, you need to make more money. 
I'm telling you from personal experience, I can't tell you how much money I paid in taxes. I, I would have to look at my, my W-2s. I don't know. I don't know how much money I paid in taxes. I can't tell you what the price of a gallon of premium gas is. I don't even look. I just put my credit card in the machine and fill up my tank. I am completely oblivious to the price of food. I order DoorDash, whatever the bill is, I pay it and I get my food and I eat it. I don't be checking the prices of virtually anything. Because once again, I live in a state of abundance. Um, I live in a state where I have way more than I need. And this is why I'm not worried about inflation. And once again, let's talk about developing the wealth habit. I have developed a wealth habit, and this is something that happened, started happening consistently starting in 2016. I either make the same amount of money or I make way more money. So my income doesn't go down. And this has been, you know, 2007, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, seven years. So I've developed a wealth threshold. And I, let me just say this and let me speak to you. If you are willing to do the work and start a business that serves people, you can get <clears throat> to the same level. You can get to enjoy the same, same lifestyle. You can enjoy that. You can, I mean, first of all, let me be honest, first few years are gonna suck. First few years are gonna suck. They're gonna be hard. You're not gonna have that kind of money that you want. But if you stick with it, because I, I, this is a comment that I consistently get, everyone wasn't meant to be an entrepreneur, okay? Everyone wasn't meant to be an investor, but everyone's trying to be an investor. So instead of trying to be an investor, try to be an entrepreneur. And I can guarantee you, you will make more money. Like all these so-called YouTube investors, I look at their videos and I see stuff because I know better. Like this dude who's going to sell his house and sell his cars and realize, you know, maybe 200K and he have to rent. I'm like, like once again, I'm not selling my Porsche. You want to know why? Because I can make more money serving you. I can make way more money serving you than selling my Porsche. One of the things that I consistently do when I buy stuff for myself is I buy it and I enjoy it. And I'm a lot like my, I, I will hold on to a car for a long time. Like I'm gonna tell you why I sold my BMW X5 and I sold my Audi. They were old and they were starting to have problems. That's the only reason I got rid of them. And I was able to sell my BMW X5M for 25,000. I drove it for three, four years and I paid 37,000. So I able, to, uh, so it only cost me, excuse me, it only cost me $12,000 or $4,000 a year to drive that vehicle. Now my new X5, I've taken a hit already. The Porsche, I can actually sell that for $20,000 more than I paid for it because it has very low mileage for its year. But I have no intentions to sell, none whatsoever. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to do even some more giving and getting setting some stuff up because one of the things that I see, because like I said, I'm getting ready to exit, exit, exit my break and go back to work and I, once again start a business i've been literally off because i shut the car business down i've been literally off for about three months how many of you can take three months off go out to restaurants that cost you two to three hundred bucks to eat go out and spend you know and i had someone 
Like, all right, let's talk about the static. I use what's called Sennheiser lavalier mics. And for some reason, there's something in this business that creates radio interference. And I don't know it until I process the video. And once again, when I do the videos, I don't listen to them, so I don't even know. And the last video had static for about 30 seconds. You would have thought that I had killed your favorite dog. 30 seconds. I'm about to say something. And it's gonna be rough, rugged, and reckless. If you can't deal with 30 seconds of static, you cannot run a business. Let me, let me just go ahead and say that. If you can't deal with 30 seconds of static, you cannot run a business. If you're gonna be so disturbed that, hey, you need to fix the static, and like my eye, you know, uh, when all that stuff went down in October, I broke a blood vessel in my eye and that's why I was wearing the sunglasses because I knew what you people would do. What's wrong with your eye? Like, I'm going to sit down and answer this question. Like, I woke up and I had broken blood vessels in my eye. My vision is perfectly fine and it's healing up. It's not a big deal, but people, major and minor shit, it's like, I can't watch your video because your eye is red. You can never start a business, my friends. You can never start a business. And this is one of the reasons that I do what I do. Whether I got a red eye or, you know, I, I've got gout, I continue to produce because if you are an entrepreneur, small shit don't stop you. You like, let's keep going. Let's go to the mountaintop. Let's make this money. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Oh, I woke up with a red eye. I still making videos. I don't hide stuff from you guys. I don't lie to you guys. So, once again, if you cannot listen to a little static, because uh, the videos where it's through the whole video, I don't put those up because those whole video files are corrupted. I don't put those up. But the ones that I miss is literally 30, 40 seconds. And y'all will act like someone's choking me. Someone is hurting me. I can't listen to it. It's up. And the static was 25 minutes in. And once again, there's something in this building. It is crazy where it will interfere with the radio frequency. So what I do is I change the frequency and hope for the best. And once again, keep going i don't let little small stuff like that like oh whoever got static and the videos must be perfect and they must be flawless no keep going i sold my first book and it was fucked up the first version and the second version the third version i finally got it right I kept going, I kept going. You know, oh, this typos and grammatically incorrect. Kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. That's what you need to do to be an entrepreneur. When shit is shaky, when shit is janky, you keep going. You keep going. Let me tell you a little story. And this is with my current girlfriend. When I was wooing her to get her back, we went out to dinner and then came back here and I asked her to spend the night and she said, I don't want to be your girlfriend. She told me, I don't want to be your girlfriend. She told me, I don't want to be your girlfriend and would you walk me to my car? So I walked her to her car, I hugged her, I felt on the booty and you know what the next day? I said, good morning. I kept going even though she told me She's like, I don't want to be your girlfriend. And I'm going to tell you why I kept going. Because she had a Christmas party and she invited me to the Christmas party. And the whole time it was a Christmas party, she was on me because she's very affectionate, very cuddly. And I was like, you still love me. You still love me. I am not going to listen to what you're saying. I am going to go with what I see with your body language. And next thing I know, and I remember it was so funny. And she's like, why am I telling you my schedule? Oh my God, we're back together again. Because at this point, because we were having the conversation and she had spent the night a few nights and we had had sex and everything. And she was like, oh my God, we're back together again. And she told me, 
I don't want to be in a relationship with you. This is what she told me. But that didn't stop me. You want to know why? Because I believe in abundance. I believe in you. Like, once again, like this is why with disruptive male, this is why so many women, men fail because they are weak. They're mentally weak. They're physically weak. They are weak. I got a girl with a booty. She can make it clap, which interestingly enough, that's not something I was really interested in, but then she did it and I liked it because I like her. So one of the things that you have to understand is when it's hard, you keep going. When it's rough, you keep going. Like October, when I put out that video, I could have been a predator and literally every lazy, superficial, messy person on the internet chimed in and what did I do? I kept going. I kept going. And a lot of you are here because of that video. A lot of you are here because of that video and I kept going and I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And some people have come and it's like, he's still around. He's still, wait a minute. Why is, why is this guy got so many fans? Because I bring the substance. I bring, because once again, I operate from a position of abundance. I operate from a position of abundance. I know. Now, I would never lose my money because I am not foolish enough to bet all my money on one thing. I would never do that. But if I did, I know I can get the money back because of experience. So once again, if you want to protect your money against inflation, make more money. That is the only protective mechanism that you're going to have. You know, you're making, let's just say $250,000 a year and gas goes up $2. Guess what? Gas is a little bit more expensive. It doesn't phase you. It doesn't rock your world. You're not out here buying gold, the blue, the blue, gold, the blue blooms, the blue blooms, the blue, the blooms, whatever they're called, or silver rounds. Because here's the thing. If you buy those things, that's only going to protect a small part of your income from inflation. It's not going to protect the majority of your income, because once again, as I laid out in the scenarios, if you have money above and beyond what you need to live, that's sitting to the side, then you can do something with that money to protect it. But if you're part of that 75% of America, working America, you don't have no money to protect. Your money is consumed by living. You have no additional income to protect. You have no money set aside to protect. That's why when I see these videos, Five ways to protect your money for against inflation. Ten ways to protect your money against. I started laughing. I'm like, do these people know who their audience is? Because let's say you make hundred thousand dollars a year, okay, and you take fifteen thousand and put it in an investment as a hedge against inv inflation. You have protected fifteen percent of your money, and eighty-five percent of your money is exposed to inflation. That's kind of like. You get in an accident and 85% of your leg is messed up. You know, 15% up here by the hips, okay, but the other 85% is fucked up. You can't walk on that leg. You can't use that leg. So 85% is a significant number. And that's if you're making 100K and have the ability to invest 15%. If you're there and we know, from my videos and my research, the 75% of America ain't even close. Ain't even close. So this is the only way that you can protect yourself against inflation is to make more money. That's the only way. All of these videos talking about five things you can do to protect your money against inflation. And one of the things, like I'm, I might sound overconfident, but you know how bad things would have to get for me to take my money out the bank because let me go ahead and paint a scenario for you literally there would be dudes raping chicks in the street 
There will be people shooting people in the street. Crime will be bananas. I mean, it would be like literally you to go to the grocery store would grab your M16 or AR-15, whatever you had, you would grab your gun, you and your wife would have your ammo bag, your wife will have your six, you would be on point. That's how you would go to the grocery store. That's how bad it would have to get before I start pulling money out the bank. We ain't even close to that. We didn't even get there during the Great Deple Depression. So all this stuff, take your money out the bank, take your crypto off the exchanges. Now, once again, taking your cryptos off the exchanges might be a good play because exchanges get hacked all the time. So that might be valid advice. But once again, um, our banking system is nowhere near collapsing. It's nothing like 2008 when the banking sector was heavily uh, leveraged with toxic mortgages. We don't have that situation. Consistently, the banks have been making money. The banks are healthy. So as long as that stays like that, I'm leaving my money in the bank. And there are people who say, take your money out the bank and throw it in investments. Throw it in investments. So here's the thing. And one of the things, I want you guys to be investors of significance and taking your money out the bank, two, 300 bucks to throw it off an investment. Let me, let's say, let's say you, you invest 3,600 bucks a year and you do that for 30 years. You won't even have 300K because you don't have enough financial wherewithal to really do anything. You need to invest minimum thousand bucks a month for 30 years to become a millionaire. If you have, the, and this is something else too, and this is another reason that I am not a heavy investor. Uh, at some point, the market's gonna turn. I don't know when, I don't have a crystal ball, but we're gonna go through a period of years of low returns because every time the market is like, we've been on an 11 year run, and this is where all this advice comes out to throw your money in the market, throw your money in the market. We're going to have a collapse of the stock market. We're gonna have a collapse of real estate and the only people who are gonna be getting rich are folks like me, business owners. Business owners. Business owners. And that, that, I keep saying, I've been saying this, 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 start a business, start a business, make more money, start a business, make more money, start a business, make more money. And uh, actually I was watching a video of a successful day trader who, is making like 150,000 a month and she has a YouTube channel. Her name is Humbled Trader. And this is the first time I saw someone actually show their P&Ls. First time I ever saw that and kudos to the Humbled Trader because a lot of them will not do that because the money they're making ain't that significant. It's just not, it's just not. So there are successful day traders, there are successful Forex traders but if you watch Humble Trader's channel, she would say she lost money for years. She lost money for years. As someone said, she was paying her stock market tuition. And I don't think the average person has the ability to take losses for three, four, five years. Honestly, uh, I'm not, the car rental business, I'm not even gonna take a loss on that because the way that I play the game. I would be sick if I lost 400,000, I'd be sick. Even though I believe in abundance and I believe in abundance lifestyle, I'd be sick if I lost 400 grand. And there are people who've lost way more money than that. There are people who've lost billions. If you understand, Google the Hunt Brothers. The Hunt Brothers tried to corner the silver market and failed and they lost billions. They lost billions. So once again, you know, I'm not about losing money. And fortunately for me, I've not lost money. I can't remember the last time that I lost money. Where, I mean, it was just went up in smoke. I've had losses. Like last year, I lost two drones. That was $5,000 that went up in smoke. But that was a business loss. And I'm gonna write that off of my taxes this year. But, um, yeah, I cannot think of a time where I actually lost money. 
I can't really think of a time. But once again, guys, this is how you protect yourself against inflation. None of this bubblegum candy popcorn stuff of um, I'm going to five things that you could do to protect your once again, unless you have a set sum of money that you don't need to live on. Maybe you have a serious 401k. Maybe you have 500,000 in your 401k and you have to reallocate or readjust your 401k to protect your money. That makes sense. But unless you're in that position where you have money that you don't need to live on, there's nothing you can do to protect your money. Nothing. Because you need your money to live and any money that you spend on gas, food, rent is exposed to inflation. So there's nothing you can do except make more money and i'm about to say we have a recession coming up perfect time best time ever to start a business i say that from experience i've done it i know what's coming and we're going to have a recession we're going to have inflationary prices and like um i i read up on the war with russia this is going to send economic shocks to people in the stock market and the crypto markets and the gold and silver markets but it's not going to disturb my business at all. It's not going to do nothing to my business because my business isn't counting on gas, oil from Russia or the Ukraine. So I'm not going to be impacted whatsoever. What's going over there? You know, I read on it to stay informed to know what's going on, but it's not going to do nothing to me. So once again, now you have it, how to protect your money against inflation. You know, you can buy crypto and if you hit the right crypto and you ride the wave, you can make a lot of money. But I feel that that is more luck than investment savvy. You just like the guy who bought, I forget the name of it, uh, Dogecoin. He just, he just got lucky. It was nothing remarkable that he did. He just got lucky. And luck can be really good luck can be fantastic but i'd rather be good than lucky i'd rather be good than lucky because good and having a certain level of expertise is something you can control you cannot control luck you can't control it so once again this is glendon cameron uh, we're going to start some new training and i'm going to be working on that this weekend so that's all i got for you guys Please leave the well-constructed, grammatically correct comments. I love that stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one.